Hey, you probably watch people make stuff on YouTube, right? Maybe you're looking for ideas, or you're researching something, or you just like watching things like come together. Maybe you wish you could do something like that. Am I over the target here? If you're like me, you'll watch someone do something and you'll think, I wish I could do that thing. Well, let's talk about how you can do that and I'll give you the secret to do whatever you want. Now, this doesn't just apply to what I make on this channel. Uh, it's universal across skills, as far as I can tell. Also, I'm gonna make something, obviously. I've made a bunch of these spears, but look at this. This handle's not quite long enough to be a handle. It's because it's not a handle, it's a tang. I printed a much larger one on a much larger printer, a Creality K1 Max. This isn't a review of that printer, but it's probably my favorite FDM printer right now. Much longer, check that out. Yeah? Now I'm gonna make this in solid bronze, kinda like this one. Uh, so enjoy watching that in the background while I talk about something totally different. So, you watch videos of people making things. There are a lot of them. Some of those are my fault. Here's the cool part about those. You can actually do that stuff too. Maybe not exactly everything you see people doing right now, but you can make really cool stuff starting immediately. And I'm specifically talking to you. Yes, you, male, between the ages of 25 and 64, in a former British colony, or Britain itself. I looked at analytics. That's literally 90% of you. Uh, so listen up, Mike. This is for you. Now, I know what you're saying. It's too expensive and dangerous. I don't have the space or the time or the experience. I don't know where to start. My name isn't Mike. I hear you, man. It's okay to feel that way. All of those things are probably true, unless your name is Mike. And yet, that's probably not what's stopping you. I think I know what the problem is here, and I have a solution. Also, a solution to all those other problems you mentioned as well, because they are real. Most of you are 25 to 64 years old. Uh, that's a weird age, isn't it? You're out of school, you're working, you're doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, I can't speak for other former British colonies, but here in the US we seem to have this idea that adults are done with school at 18 to 22-ish, depending how much school you go to, uh, or whatever, and then and then you, you get a job, and you know what you're doing, and then you just work at whatever job it is that uses the skills you learned in school until you're dead. You know, you should know what you're doing. Old people being kind of bad at stuff is embarrassing, right? Like, young people can suck at things all the time, like, we totally get that. But an old person is supposed to know what they're doing, right? They put that stuff on like TV shows. There's like the stereotypical 55 year old who's doing something like stupidly childish and he's terrible at it. And it's played for laughs. As like adults, we are punished for not being experts at something already and actively dissuaded from actually learning anything. It's crazy. It's like everybody can figure out what you want to do with your life, what your life is going to be like by the time you're 18. Then you go to school for that. And then you get a job with that skill. And there you go, you're set for life. Uh, I am way too scatterbrained for that crap. How many of you people knew the direction your life was gonna go when you were 18? Hmm? I didn't. 18 year old me was a complete idiot. I mean, not entirely, he, he, did, he did one thing really right. And it was so right, I have to give him props for that. But everything else, he was a total idiot. Honestly, I still feel that way and I'm a lot older than 18. So what does this have to do with anything? Uh, maybe you're not understanding what I'm trying to say here. So here's an exercise. Grab a piece of paper and a pencil or marker or crayon or whatever. And I want you to draw from memory a seahorse. Yep, you know those weird little like fish monster things with the horse head and they like move really slow through an aquarium at the Red Lobster? One of those, from memory, right now. Well, you're not an artist? Not right now you're not, and certainly won't be with that attitude. Here, I, it's not gonna hurt you, I'll do it too. Here, let me get a pencil. Here we go, okay, seahorse it is. <laughs> what does a seahorse look like? Jeez. Mine's gonna end up looking a lot like Trogdor. Is that okay? Do seahorses have scales? I don't even know. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll say it's got scales. Okay, are you done? Here's mine. Pretty bad, right? What does yours look like? Does it look like an eight-year-old drew it? Would you put it on the fridge, you know, so everyone can see it? Would you be embarrassed if people saw it? I don't care, I'm putting it on YouTube. Here's the thing. You probably have exactly as much experience pencil drawing a seahorse as an eight-year-old does. Of course it looks like that. Now, bring up some pictures of seahorses on your phone, uh, spend the next six months drawing them and looking up like tutorials on shading and proportions and drawing a bunch of sea creatures for the next six months and then take drawing number 1000 of a seahorse and stick it on the fridge next to drawing number one. See the difference? Literally every maker skill works that way. The reason people don't learn new things is because someone else put their seahorse drawing number 8000 on Instagram not number one, and now when you draw something that looks like an eight-year-old's drawing of a mutated horse fish monster, uh, you get discouraged, and you stop, and you go and watch other people draw stuff on YouTube. It's because you have something the eight-year-old doesn't have, and that's fear of producing something that looks like it was made by an eight-year-old. Call it fear of failure if you want. 
or fear of things not going correctly. There is no failure. Like you're not in school and you're not gonna get a grade for this, but things can go wrong, sure. Let me help you with that fear, all right? Right now, you don't have to be afraid that things might go wrong. They will definitely go wrong. It's an absolute certainty. Things are gonna go wrong all the time. Every project has hurdles. Let's say you're trying to make a big bronze spear and uh, the brand new crucible you've never used before decides to crack open and dump a whole bunch of molten bronze inside your furnace that was working perfectly up until then. That might throw off your whole YouTube video production and delay the video for way longer than you thought it should and force you to use a different metal because guess who doesn't have enough bronze that isn't frozen inside the old furnace? I'm not upset, maybe a little bit. The point is, things go wrong, except that's the wrong way to think of it. Projects aren't going wrong, okay? You are simply learning the best skill imaginable, and that is problem solving. Remember that list of issues you had before of why you're not gonna do it? Those are problems to be solved. You can make a list and just go hit them right, one right after another after another. Are you embarrassed that your project doesn't look pro level? Looks like my beautiful seahorse art. Don't put a video of it on YouTube. No one's gonna see it. You, you don't have to show people your early attempts. You don't have to be embarrassed. Are you worried about safety? Well, try to figure out everything that can go wrong and set up your space to be safe. Keep, keep a fire extinguisher on the wall next to you like pour metal over a sand bed. Whatever you're doing, there's a procedure to do it safer, okay? Don't have a shop right now at all? I understand that, that's a real problem. Uh, start with a different related skill that you can do where you are right now. That brings me to the most important part here, and that is skill stacking. It's not a new idea. It's basically just the process of building multiple complementary skills instead of focusing on one. Business people talk about it all the time, but it works here too. Let's say you see a super awesome metal casting project and you want to learn metal casting, but you live in a studio apartment and you're pretty sure that no molten bronze is somewhere hidden inside your contract, right? No problem. To be honest, I made a whole bunch of longbows in the kitchen of an apartment. A granite countertop makes a really, really durable like workbench area, though some of my neighbors weren't super happy with me. Anyways, obviously don't, don't go melting metal in your bathroom, right? Like a weirdo. Instead, think, what other skill did I use for this? This pattern was 3D printed. 3D printing is a whole nother ball game, right? Get into that. There's a whole lot to learn. And yes, like the machine does it for you. Yeah, try using a 3D printer when you don't know what you're doing. See how long that gets you. It's a whole different skill set and you can do so many cool things with it. Get an FDM printer if you're in a studio apartment, obviously, and just print PLA and go nuts. But Paul, I'm too broke to buy a K1 Max and a bunch of PLA. I can barely afford ramen right now. Okay, really backtrack then. I had to model this, 3D model this in a program called Blender. Blender's free. You can afford free, right? It goes on a computer or a laptop. Uh, you probably have one of those. Learn 3D modeling. That's another skill. Anything you can 3D model, you can probably print. If you can print it, you can probably make it in metal and do all sorts of other stuff. 3D modeling, like 3D printing, like metal casting, is another skill that can branch into a bunch of other ones. If you don't have a computer, you're watching this on a phone right now, cool. You're watching YouTube. You have access to YouTube. Use YouTube to learn traditional drafting, like pencil and paper. Get design and stuff, not seahorses this time. And I'm not saying draw something, you know? Unless art's your goal, then go nuts. Learn traditional drafting techniques. There are videos out there. There are free books at libraries. Learn that. When you can learn to design something and do like proper layout, that will help you later when you take on oh, more skills. Yeah. Believe it or not, designing something is usually where people screw up first because it's the first step and you can really screw it up by skipping that step. You don't know where to start and you're too broke? Start right there. Pencil and paper, you can afford that. Go to the dollar store, get a notebook, get a pencil, get a ruler, or just draw on your walls. Your landlord will love it. You could probably find a pencil and pen somewhere around you right now. When you get some cool designs of things you want to make, start looking for a printer or a place that can print stuff. You know, like a public library, a lot of those have printers. Or get a nerd friend so he'll print you stuff that you design, right? Problem solving. Or, or go from drawing to like a block of wood and some chisels. You know, it depends what you want to make. If you want to get into sewing, just get a needle and thread and some cheap clothes from Goodwill to cut up and sew into stuff. Make it work. You can make it work. The first like five years I was making stuff, I was a student and I had zero dollars. A lot of those longbows were made with $15 worth of tools. 
And here's the secret to all of this. Skill number one, that's gonna cost you, okay? It's gonna take a lot of time, a lot of effort, and you're gonna start out kind of looking like an eight-year-old's doing it, right? That's okay, okay? Skill two, you're gonna start out as like a 10-year-old and you'll pick it up faster. Skill three, you're gonna start as like a high schooler who's kind of smart and you pick it up even faster. By skill 20, you're gonna pick up like a general basic level of competence in like a half hour. It's insane. It's like learning things stacks exponentially. And all of these skills exponentially grow the things you can make. Like it doesn't go like you can make one thing, then you can make two things, then you can make three things. It's like one, then six things, then 36 things, then anything you want. Like it's, it's, it's definitely a crazy curve. So start now. Don't be afraid to look like an eight year old. In fact, become one to a kid. Every skill is like starting out at zero. It's all brand new. So pick up a new skill, right? Learn to weld or code or solder electronics or write fiction or draw seahorses or play the violin. It's gonna sound like someone deflating an angry cat for a while at first, but it's okay when you figure it out, then you'll be able to learn cello like in a quarter of the amount of time. It's insane. And then guitar will be like, after a weekend, you got it. Do it enough times, and instead of having that mental block when it comes to learning new skills, you're going to crave learning the new skills. I'm at the point where I don't even want to start a project. It's hard for me to start a project unless there's at least one major thing that I have no idea how to do. So that way I actually have something to figure out. That may not be the best approach, but meh, whatever. If you want to fast track that, say you got a 3D printer and you want to learn to like sand cast, turn this into this. I can help you with that. I have a link down below for an online course. All right, take your 3D printer and use it to help you learn how to make these things. I'm running a sale right now. Uh, last I ran last month and then I told like nobody about it. So I'm gonna extend it to three days after this video goes public. I'm not a good businessman, obviously, but I can make stuff and I can teach you to make stuff more quickly and help you shove you along that journey of stacking more skills a little bit more quickly. If you're interested in that, there's a link down below. I suppose I should test this first, see if it actually works as a box cutter. Here's my replacement furnace. It's good to know their warranty works, huh? It is a bit ridiculously long now that I see it. And behold, the next victim. Okay, now go make stuff, lots of stuff. And send me pictures, I wanna see. Or, or I will find you.